Welcome back. Let's take our brownie testing to the next level by introducing PyTest's parameterization. The tests that we wrote previously were stateful, the outcome was predetermined, and they're useful to tell if something breaks. But where brownie really gets hot is when you can run your tests repeatedly over a wide range of dynamic input parameters. This allows you to integrate over a variety of testing scenarios. By way of example, we previously deposited into Curves 3 pool, but now let's abstract the process and redeposit from 3 pool into every viable curve meta pool that contains 3 pool. Let's begin. We notice here that our tests folder contains a lot of tests from our previous sessions. Let's clean this up. These tests are all gonna run pretty quickly. So let's move everything there into this tests unitary. This way when we're running our testing, we can do the fast tests or we can run the slow tests. The slow tests, the ones that will use more complex testing scenarios, we'll put in this integrative folder. And within this, we'll create our test three pool test. This will use PyTest. And we'll also use that very useful load contract we created last session. The three pool redeposit will load a pool for a particular value I offset. This is what we'll be varying over. We'll then approve transfer, make the transfer, and verify the transfer. do this by looking at Alice's LP token balance. This means that we're gonna need Alice. We'll need the registry. It's like the most useful curve pool. We want our tri pool that's already been funded from our conf test. This has an LP token and I is the parameter we want to vary. We do this by decorating this function as a pi test. And we're going to parameterize the value i over a range. In this case, we'll run between 0 and 9, giving us 10 tests in total. To load the pool for a particular value i offset, we're going to be using, again, the registry. They have this function get coin swap complement. which will accept, in this case, the tri pool LP token and the offset parameter I. The complement will be matching up with a pool address by registry, find pool for coins. Here we're going to get the specific address of the pool that will accept both the tri pool liquidity provider token and the complement that we just loaded above. Finally, we'll load this into a contract. Twenty five percent mark. Let's approve our transfer. So we'd like to take the pool we're trying to deposit into and allow us to accept an amount, which we'll set to one times 10 to the 20th. This is another parameter you can vary. And we will sign this from Alice. Looking good. Let's actually make the transfer. So this is going to require 
a list that looks something like this. We need to find the offset for every pool that corresponds to the tri-pool liquidity provider token. So first we'll set up an empty array. We're going to use again the registry, which has a function get in coins. If we pass any generic pool, this is going to return back the number of coins it contains. We'll pass that into get coin indices, which will take an address and then another address and a third address. These addresses are the pool that we're interested in, the tri pool liquidity provider token, and its complement, which will return all of these particular parameters. We only care about the first one, aka tri pool liquidity token which is going to exist in the offsets variable here at offset zero. And finally, we make the transfer. Amounts is this array we just created. Zero is going to be the minimum. We don't care about slippage in this testing scenario. And finally, Let's look at Alice's liquidity provider token balance. So this is the liquidity token that is being tracked for this particular pool. And again, we would count on the registry's get LP token for this pool. And our assertion is that the pool liquidity token balance of, which derives from this being an ERC-20 contract of Alice is now greater than zero. Let's test it over in this window here. We're gonna brownie test and we're gonna pull these from the test integrative folder. Our network is mainnet fork and we'll pass interactive mode so if I have a typo, which usually happens, I'll end up on the console and be able to debug it. But this case, no typos. That's always, that's always a nice surprise. It's thinking and it's loaded 10 tests. Uh -huh, there was one typo. Offsets is not defined. You are correct. I'll quit out of interactive mode because this is a pretty simple one. We will run it again. The up key doesn't work on my keyboard, so I have to do that little history hack. Any other typos? You can see how integrative tests run a lot slower. This is already 10 tests we created from this. It's very common for this to number in the hundreds. In this case, this will also run a bit slower because it's needing to pull the contracts from Etherscan. But the good news is our tests are running fine, and we're seeing it go dot by dot through all 10 tests. Integrative tests can get really cool. You can add strategies, you can add a variety of conditions, and you can use this to test edge cases. We're gonna be covering this in a lot greater detail. For the time being, I'm just going to sit excitedly and watch the dot tick up to 10. You don't have to stick <laughs>